G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before we get started there, we'll just get some sizes up in centimetres and inches, and we'll also get some colours running up the screen there as well. All right, now you saw the picture in the beginning there. That's what we're going to paint today. Something simple and effective, but also great looking for a beginner to uh, achieve on their own canvas, all right? So come on over here. And we'll get, I'll show you what I've got going down on the palette here, okay? So I've penciled in the other day just something what I roughly want to put onto a canvas. It has altered a little bit, like they're not going to go all the way up. I'm going to bring them down a bit and have this sky opening with some mist around there. I made the mountain a bit smaller and they'll come right up. So I have some craft paint, which is a soft bodied paint, way different pigment than what's the titanium in a tube. And I like to mix this up with my clear retarder and it creates my own magic white ready to paint my skies the way you've seen me do skies if you've watched my videos before. And we'll get all this just crisscrossed onto our canvas like so. Just push it right in where you want it. I'll go down to the treetops and the mountain there. Get it all roughly where we need it. Okay, it's on there. Get it to there. Go oh, down here as well. So it's on there, but it looks very, you know, goobly and globby and brush stroke. So now this is where your artist license comes in handy. You just stroke it nice and neat and take your time. Okay, there we go. Well, I've just wiped that brush. I haven't cleaned it and I want to pick up the cerulean blue and I'm going to have a cool sky in this one. You can have a warm or a cool sky. Warm skies are the fire looking colours and the cool skies are watery looking colours. And I want to just start at the top and get this in there. All the way down to the bottom there, around the trees, around me mountain, up those trees there. There we go. You don't want a really dark blue sky. It just doesn't look very real. There we go. We've got a beautiful cerulean blue painted over that craft white with the retarder in it. And it's given us pretty much a realistic blue sky colour. It's not that hard to paint a realistic sky. I'm going to get some, uh, rid of some of that off the edge there just so I don't keep picking it up. There we go. Now I'm just going to stroke that nice and softly into there and I want to put a bit of warmth in my sky, just a tad of warmth. And for me warmth I like to get some crinacridone magenta, just pull it along the palette a bit just so I can get some in there. Okay, just like that, not much at all and roughly down on the horizon. Uh, that's it. Now I wipe it on, wipe it anywhere on a rag on the edge of your easel there wherever and now I want to crisscross that into the bottom horizon eight strokes crisscrosses so it's not just a line across your blue sky you've you've sort of pushed it everywhere once you've done that then stroke it left and right again and we've just got that polluted haze down on the horizon line there it could be the sun setting as well. I'm trying to set through the um, actual, let's say it's snowy type of atmosphere in the sky. There we go. I'm liking that. Very easy. All right, we'll put some realistic clouds in our sky. So I've got titanium white out of the tube, okay? It's totally different to this craft paint. This is got texture and body and pigment and quality and greatness within it. <laughs> so we'll get some clouds on the sky. Where's our mountain going to be? I've kind of run over it a bit, but we'll see. Now, I'll, if anything, I want to put some... I'll use this brush just to create the tops of my clouds, the tops of these lineal low-laying clouds. Just like so, nice and long, get them nice and long, different different heights, something there. I'm having that other bit of trees there, so I might have something here. Just something with a hard top. 
Now I can use this brush. The cloud looks a bit mumble jumble at the moment, but I'm going to use this just to tantalate the tops a bit the way I want them to be. All right, the mountain's going to cover the middle of that up a bit, but don't worry, just paint right through it. Okay. Now I want to grab a brush, a blending brush, and I want to blend the bottom down into the atmosphere because these are the horizon clouds. These are down far away. And we're just going to blend them down just like so over here. Now I'm going to wipe the build up off my brush and continue along here. Right off there. Now just to break this up so it doesn't just look like one smeared long cloud at the bottom. I mean the mountain's going to break it up but we just grab our white again. They're going to come down there the mountain. So roughly where you'll see it. So I'll put one there about there and maybe one about here. I'm just adding a darker value just like that and then I'm going to bring the bottom of that down. Very easy. It's, it's blending the way it is because that craft paint underneath with the retarder is allowing all that to happen. Okay, see what we've done there? We're going to have that mountain in the middle there, so that's fine. And they're just in front of those other bits, way in the distance there. All right, let's add something nice with a bum in it. So we'll, we'll, we'll sort of stamp on the bum area, but putting the body of the cloud on there and then bringing it over our head, pick up some more paint, another bum area there, bring it over our head and let it, I don't know if it's a word, participate into nothing, nothing up there. Okay, that can come across there like that. Blending brush again and a rag. Give this one, see these have got no bums down here, they're blended down, but the ones as they start getting up from the horizon line, you, I like to give them a bit of a bottom, or I call it a bum, okay, and then pull your brush off, add turmoil, find other bums if there's other bums within it, like that, boom, add turmoil within that cloud so it's just looking so real, push it out. See how I pulled that out, it's not just stopping in a blob there, sometimes you've got to do that you don't want to stop your clouds in a blob. Also, you can see, see what I'm doing? I'm blobalizing it. We've got some darker, not darker, we've got some brighter white here and lighter whites there. And the same within this body section here. And we can put something just over here. So I've cleaned my brush, loaded it up again, and I want to put something over here. I'm not even thinking, I'm just scribbling around with this brush. But in hindsight, I want that type of shape to create something over our head. And then I'll put something maybe a bit separate from that body and way up there. And you can even put little, I'll get some paint on there, little gap filler ones like that, maybe one like that. Because they're on their own. All right, we'll do the same here. We'll get a bum on this. Just work it out. Oh yes, lovely. I, I like the way that's scratching out there like that. Looking good. Too easy. And now we're going to turmoil. Add the turmoil. Twist it. Get brighter and duller values of that white. So you don't think you just got to blend like this because you'll blend the living buggery out of it. You don't want to do that if you can help it. The way I'm teaching with these paints and this under craft white and retarder there over here just fix this up here over our heads and up to nothing there up to nothing and we'll get rid of this little we'll give this a bit of something about itself there we go now the clouds are finished but any bits that are too like dull in one spot this is the yumminess you just add some more pure white within that and this adds the third dimension of that cloud I like to call it the yumminess all right there we go that'll do and just sit that yumminess down but leaving the vibrancy of it there if you're a regular viewer you've seen me do this 
a million times so I'm leaving the vibrancy there just sitting it down that little bit that way it's not all boring your clouds have got so much bullshit going on people would love to look at them there's a nice big air there got him off I look like a cat here all right I've just blow dried this bottom area where I'm going to start painting on next but just this little bit here I want to add whether it's a moon or a sun just something that size nothing too stupid and big so I want to grab some of the the cerulean blue there we go and I want to taint it with some white so it's mainly white but with the blue tinge in there and this can be the moon just in this little window here little twist I haven't pushed on it too hard pull it off and that is good enough okay just before I finish I just want to put some longer stuff in front of that just there to create dimension and depth in front of the moon there just something like that there we go Okay, I'm grabbing this craft white again. I'm not worried if it goes with the blue a little bit because we're going to add blue into it anyway. And we'll just put the water down on the bottom half. So find the bottom half, get all this in there like so. Just bring it up to that. Because where the mid-ground meets the water, I don't want it in focus, I want it very blurry because it's a long way away from us. So there we go, now I might just scoot some of the blue in there like that. Not too much, maybe a little bit of the red as well. Wipe it on there, pick up some more white if I can find it. And then just push all that through the watercolour. Got that little bit of warmth. go not much at all not much at all but that's our water as well I might see if I can put just a little of warmth in there maybe here a bit more there we go a little bit more well oh, not too much there we go nice bit of warmth in there pull it through it's a bit, bit paler than the sky Okay, now what we want to do, I've just sprayed some water next to my burnt umber there and I want to map in my small, subtle but effective little mountain in the distance there, okay? So I'm just pulling this paint into the water there to get it inky enough to spread from the brush onto the canvas. And uh, I want a little mountain. Just something coming down there like that that's it and I'm just gonna brush that in now I want this top bit just a bit more let's say a bit more peakier than that there we go play with it till you're happy with it oh, I hope you can hear me sometimes I talk soft when I getting into it you know there we go. Now we'll just get that there like that. It's going to fade away there. I'll just map all that in so it's like an upside down triangle. So it's like a triangle or a pyramid shape, okay? Just like that. Smear it over there into nothing. That's all right. Now this is acrylic, so I'm doing it this way because it is acrylic. There. Now I want to get some white while that's still a bit damp. Without cleaning my brush, I'm just pulling some of the white in there so it's going to be like a different colour brown now. Alright. And I want to create that zigzag look that I've spoken about before. You pretty much create a, a zigzag from your mountain like that, from any peak. And it gives you that look that it's coming at you. Now I want to just brush this in like so. Trees will be there covering a lot of that up. And let's try the other side.
There we go. It's a, it's a simple little mountain. Trees are going to cover that very little middle bit. And if you want, <coughs> you get over here. There we go. Lovely. Nice and subtle. It's got atmosphere between you and it. That's what I'm putting on there now. <sighs> now you can have snow on your mountain or you can just have it as dry rock, whatever you want it to be. Blend that in there a little bit up there, so to speak. There we go. I'm just cleaning that brush, picked up a little bit of white, and um, if this isn't going to stick on, I will dry the mountain. So I just want some sort of heavier, brighter, whiter snow on there in bits and pieces. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Get more on your brush anyways. There we go. Just finely detailing it. It's a small mountain, so it's easy to detail. Probably get a bit out here as well, coming down the mountain. Now I'm just grabbing a bit more of the white from that pile now. It's still wet. Maybe I should have dried it. I'm just going to see. I just want to try and add some dry atmosphere down here, some fog. I'm just trying to virtually blur the bottom hard line of brown there, okay? Just like this, and using this brush, or pick up another one you might find does it better. I can cope with this one. Now I'm just creating that subtle bit of fog at the bottom here. There we go. Just to create distance from this mountain and the trees that we're about to put in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, I still haven't even cleaned that brush. I'm picking up some more of the burn umber. It's quite tainted, meaning it's got other color of that white mixed with it. Now my water's still wet and I want to um, pretty much emulate this mountain here. Pick up some more. I've gone a bit higher than the mountain should be. Higher up, I mean, because the reflection needs to be a bit lower, but when I pull it down, that's going to happen. So I'll go to there, the horizon line there like that, and I'll grab my brush, because it's such a small one, I want to just lightly pull it down. That'll do. That will do. Now let's grab some lighter value to emulate the snow within the reflection as well. So we've got some white and we'll probably put some white here like there and just like there. If we can get it on, that'll do. Just something we can also try and pull down. There we go. I'm happy with that. And I might pull this way. That's it, don't muck with it. I almost forgot, let's put this moon's reflection in the water too, eh? Before we dry it, we can get this, get some more blue in the middle of that. We can get this, pull it down a bit, and we can probably pull this through the water as well, hopefully. Just enough, there we go, beautiful. Now I can dry it. I'm, uh, I think I might want that, yeah, that's it, a little bit more. Now I'll dry it. Okay, that's done. Now we want to put our trees in front of here and over this section here. I'm just going to use a flat brush and I'm going to get the forest green. I've wet the palette a bit so as it's going to do like the brown did, it'll transfer onto the canvas a lot more easier. And I'll start in the middle. I'm going to do it flat 
So we're creating stuff above, above and in the water there. Probably about from about here. And then I'm gonna turn the brush around now. I could have used a smaller one because I wanna start coming up. And just, I want these up there like that. That's where I want them. And I want some air in between them so it's not like a solid mass of trees with no air in it. They do have air in them. So I wanna get mainly the Top bit done. I want to come up about this high somewhere, maybe about that high with them. Fill in the bottoms. They're just long, long way away now. I might put just a bit of brown just in the actual along here, just to where I'm going to go, just so it'll darken up those middle bits just like that. Let's see what I've done. And then I'll add the green now. I'll just wash that brown off the brush. Pick up the green again and continue all different lengths and heights there. Look at that. And you've got the nice sky behind it. We've got some of the sky breaking through, giving it that realistic look. And all the way over to the end here. And then you can get this mass in the water as well. Where's our horizon line? And pull it down. Just pull it down like that. Leave the top alone, just pull this down. Hang on, this here I've got to match up a little bit better than what it's doing. There we go. And pull it down. Just going to do the same on this side. So, what you can do is just pretty much put it on and pull down the small bit like that, which is in front of the mountain. And then this is gonna pretty much come all the way. I'll just do it like this now so you get an idea. Down there like that. Okay. Pull this bit down before I get too far away from it. Don't want it to dry on me. There we go. Get all the top half done first. Just a flat brush is doing this. Making lots of little distant evergreen trees there. Okay, now what I'm doing, see all these sharp bits there, I'm just, get the bit of the brush, where are we? Take a lot of it off, and I'm kind of getting some hairier bits there now, just to soften that and make it a bit more realistic. Just see like that, just there. Didn't take much. Did the same over here, and I'm trying to do the same just in front there, subtly. All right, just got another smaller flat. Got that same forest green. Now I want to mix some Cadillo light with that. Get your paint wet enough so it's going to transfer. And this is pretty much going to highlight our trees we just put on and give them their shape. Okay, and if it's just adjust the darkness or brightness of this one you're putting on here now, okay? So I'll start from about here. Very skinny little bits, just go over those darks. And you can do the top half first, 
just so you don't get scared, because I get scared too. I'll get on there yeah. and create oh, big blob. Get off there, you big blob. There we go. And you're creating different sections of trees within this body of trees here. Let's go for it now. Come on. There we go. Leaving some of the darks there. It's just very long way away. Pine trees. And then down here, I'm just going to pull it into the reflection like that. That's all. That's all you've got to do for that half. And get all this done like that. And then the same on the other side. I want to just get something in here first. Now I can put the darker green back if I feel I've munted that up too much. I don't know if I told you, but I'm telling you again if I did, I've dried that first layer of green. Find your horizon line. Where is it about here? So I'm pretty much going over the top half first, just with this brighter colour, leaving a lot of the darks there. <laughs> leaving a lot of the darks there, it's important. And then, see there's all different, now we can bring this. But what I'll do is I'll darken that reflection water colour green up because it's not dark enough here so I've got some on my brush and I'm just going to pull it down because it wasn't dark enough you need the darks there to make the lights pop there we go look at that got it okay now I'm grabbing some more yellow into that green a lot more yellowy colour and we want to Highlight some of this again, just pockets of it here and there. Mainly the tops, I suppose, leave the bottom bits darker. And then when you come to the bottom bit, just pull bits of this yellow reflection in there as well. I haven't dried it, but I should have. You dry yours, I'm just trying to save time with the filming. It works better when it's dry. Just a bit here and there, don't overdo it with this yellow. And when you pull this down into the shadow colors, it just gives it a bit more of a wow factor. There we go. Now I've dried that, I'm just going to pick up some uh, black on that same brush I was using and I want to put that depth line within that right on the horizon there. So where are we? About here. I'll, I'll just lightly scratch it in with this so I can take this stick away and do it freehand. Pretty much there like that, see? You can already see what that darkness does. Just adds that more sense of realism. Now I'm getting the paint on the brush and I just want to come across, I want it to kind of wear off as I'm doing it. So I'm gonna just try and wear it off the brush like that. Okay, turn the brush around. Hang on, I'll get a bit more off there. So I'm rubbing it off the brush along the horizon line like so. It's all crooked but level. And now I'm going to go up within the trees there like that just to get this dark band going across there. How's that looking in the monitor? 
Not too bad. Oh, it's not as nice as I'd bloody like it to be, but it'll do. We'll get there. There we go. Just get bands of it up in there. Just so you're destroying that perfect little neat line you put there in the beginning. Because we're going to add some glaze and put a film on top of the water so the water would look like it looks got a surface on it. It's got sheen. It's got a film of light hitting it. That's looking all right there. We'll get this looking a bit better. There we go. A bit better, a bit better. Don't, don't get too frustrated with it, Ian. Just to about there, those smaller bits can stay like that. There. Now down here I've got some glaze. I want to get some white and a blue and mix it up to the value I want. Nothing too bright, just to get that colour there going across the water. And then I want to mix that with the glaze, okay? There's a lot of glaze with such a little amount of paint. As I call it, a lot of sauce for little spaghetti. Now over here there's no horizon line, but this glaze is pretty much gonna make it. So let's, let's at least do that bit first. So we'll come across nice and easy, nice and easy. There we go, we got water there, right across there. That has made the horizon line. Now this will help keep the glazed brush level, this bullshit stick, and it's going to sink down everything. So we've got a bit there. Don't rub this right in because it can pull the paint underneath off if you're too heavy handed with it. Sink that mountain down. I pushed a bit heavier there. I'll grab some more and I want to sink this down as well. There we go. Now we can add a little bit more blue if we like to that glaze. A bit more glaze, there we go. And we can add those highlights in the water. Because our water's more white, that's why I've picked up the blue. So this is going to, see how it's pulled that paint off underneath? That's what I was trying to get across. So we'll just lightly do this then because I wouldn't want you to pull your paint off there we go we're just putting a surface on top of that water mainly out here get that bit done beautiful I don't know how I got some green in there but too bad that's pretty much it And this does dry a lot more duller. But in the end, you've got like a film over your water. Now, just to finish it off, I want to put a bit of fog over here. So I've got my little scrumbling brush and I have some white, no water, no nothing. I'm just getting it in the brush. Make sure there's no thick globs on the edge of the brush. I'll just tease it up here a bit, that's fine. And now I want to get fog lightly damp it on and come over the surface of the water like I'll come off the painting there Is that picking it up yes and I want to come in front of the trees in front of the trees and sort of dance on the surface of the water over here okay just like that and hopefully this will look reasonable there's not much on that brush and I'm just smearing the hell out of it. Make sure your paint's dry before your painting's dry before you do this. Okay. We we'll probably can put some around here if we want. Let's just try it. Just to blur that distance area up. Just to blur all that up. There we go. On the water and above it.
just bits in front of here. Just step back, look at your work, see where bits are missing or overdone. I don't know if I want any here, but I'll just put a bit here for the tutorial's sake. Just a bit of fog. See how easy it is? And maybe, is that dry? I don't want to bugger that up. I'll leave that. So I'll just sign it, and then after that we can whack a frame on it, see how she looks. And be sure to check out my links below. Check out my merchandise. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content on my channel here every month. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. And if you have any art you want to share with me or others, there's a link to my art group page. Go there and become a member. All right, let's just finish this off. Put Steve's little paw print there. There you go, that's not too shabby, is it? Just realised I didn't have my microphone plugged in. We've got a beautiful painting in that frame. It really sets it off with the white inner border. We've got a distant mountain with some trees there and a beautiful looking realistic sky. Just remember, you can do that. Well, I had fun painting this and I hope you had fun painting along with me as well. Check out the links below. There's a, over 200 more other videos that I've got there for beginners and advanced beginners. And if you like what I'm doing, be sure to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.